Good morning and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am Dan Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics, today's video is going to be the best of Dragon Magazine. Uh, this is volumes one and two. Uh, this is a revised edition of volume one and, and two. So it uh, basically what the what the editor stated was that they they trimmed it down, not in the content, but in the number of advertisements that were in it. So it really did reduce the uh, the volume by about six pages. So there was there was an additional six pages worth of uh, advertisements in there. And uh, I, I recently bought this along with the other four best ofs. So I got a combined all five best of uh, Dragon Magazines for about $75. So, so actually pretty cheap. Um, you know, obviously less than, uh, less than about $16, $17 a piece. So, so I was really happy. I didn't do the math in my head, but uh, really, uh, you know, really happy with, uh, with what I picked up for that price. And the condition of these is absolutely phenomenal. I really can't, show you um i really can't show you the the quality as as much as i would like to but i will i will shift over to a full screen so i can raise this up here and and show you so so here it is and and you can kind of tell that the it is still very vibe you know vibrant um even though the cover wasn't very vibrant to begin with but the interior pages are really, really clean and uh, much, much cleaner actually than the PDF that I'm going to show. So if I if I really wanted to, I could create my own PDFs, um, you know, from this if I wanted to risk bending this, uh, you know, this really nice binding you know, here and, and make a cleaner copy of that. Uh, so, uh, since I'm not going to do that, I'll probably just use the magazine itself, you know, and be very gentle with it, uh, or use the PDF, uh, which is a pretty rough copy of the PDF anyway. So, uh, that, that's the other thing. My desktop camera really doesn't orient magazine sized, uh, documents that well you know i tried messing around and trying to get it and it seems to stretch it out and condense it in order to give you a few full view and uh it's it just not as effective as going through a pdf so um without further ado i will jump through the pdf and i'm, I'm just going to go through an overview of what was in best of dragon magazine and uh i haven't done a complete read through every single article yet um, because this is just a you know a preview and I, I look back at it uh, very quickly so anyway let's go to our nope so here we go I made a mistake <laughs> so here is the best of uh, the best of dragon games one and two the revised uh, this is not the copy that that I am, you know, that I purchased. Mine is actually in much better condition than this one. Um, and there were some advertisements, and this advertisement's actually in there. I think the, the purpose for re removing some of the advertisements were that they, by the time they printed this revised edition, those, uh, those games or, or advertisements were no longer valid. Um, so they removed them for this reprint. So the editor was uh, Kim Mohan at the time, and you know he goes through and explains uh, the revision. Gives you the contents, and you can see it's a magazine of roughly 68 pages long. So not not very small and and not too too large. So design designers forum, 
by Gary Gygax, and here Gary Gygax is talking about the uh, the concepts of spatial, temporal, and physical relationships in D and D, the planes. Um, so, this article came out most likely, um, you know, or almost definitely prior to the manual of the planes, and so. I'm sure that the Manual of the Plains actually took a lot of these uh, writings into uh, into context before they were uh, included. And so here we have all of the travel from the outer planes to the uh, from outer plane to outer plane, and so on. Just talking about travel and how to get through. And here is a graphic that I'm pretty sure it's in the Manual of the Plains as well. <coughs> How green was my mutant? So a lot of references to uh, Metamorphosis Alpha, uh, which is actually a game that I, I never played back in the day. So I'm, I'm just not familiar with it. So this came out before before Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, so it ran parallel with uh, old D&D. And then, um, I believe I saw some dates on it that this, this came out in 70, maybe 76 or 77. Uh, so that was a year or two prior to uh, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. And this kind of gives me like a and almost like a gamma world kind of feel to it uh, because they talk about mutations and such so uh, some ideas missed in metamorphosis alpha by James Ward by the way An alternate beginning sequence for Metamorphosis Alpha. So yeah, they spent quite a bit of time uh, in the early Dragon magazines uh, for this game. Program ship skills. Perhaps this was something that was leading into the Barrier Peaks uh, adventure. Hints on D&D Judges. All right, so part one, towns, part two is wildernesses. And what, what these articles do is they, they really give you uh, the idea of really adding a lot of detail to dungeons and towns and, and the wilderness, you know, adventures and such. And uh, that's a lot of what this particular volume of The Best of Dragon does. Is a lot of these articles are just talking about added, adding in more and more layers to, uh, you know, to your D&D &D game. Remember, the, some of these articles are, are predated before Advanced Dungeons and Dragons came out. So, you know, these were mostly talking about adding that layer of complexity that you might then later on see in Advanced Dungeons and Dragons as well. So part three is the dungeons, all of these by uh, Joe Fisher, I'm pretty sure. Um, I like some of these, uh, so they added some uh, some additional magic items. So you have uh, the Hobbit's Pipe, and, uh, and this is back when they were using the word Hobbit. So uh, they have pipeweed of tranquility, pipeweed of stoning, uh, different kind of stoning. <laughs> They're talking about turning someone to stone for a uh, for a limited duration uh, from the use of the pipeweed, uh, pipeweed of illusion, pipeweed of Acapulco. They have the ring of magic missiles. Now this ring here is super super powerful. Um, you know, I, I think that you probably don't realize how powerful this ring actually is, but a magic ring that holds 10 magic missiles, which can be fired two at a time, it can be recharged, it takes two magic missile spells per, uh, per replacement charge, 
All right, so um, so basically, if uh, it would take 20 magic missile spells to cast to recharge this 10 magic missile uh, ring. And uh, I've played some magic because I would love to have had this uh, this ring. Very, very powerful. Um, especially for a lower level uh, magic user to control. Bag of infinite wealth. Magical bag that turns base materials into gold at a rate of 100 pieces per day. A ring of infravision, which is pretty nice, uh, basically gives you the same sight as, uh, you know, as an elf or an older edition as a halfling or dwarves. I'm going to move on. So they have an article here on languages. All right. And... Um, the rules lay down that each of the species has its own language except for humans, most of whom can speak common, as can 20% of the non-humans as an extra tongue. All right, so, uh, so non-humans only have a 20% chance of speaking the common, and, and that might actually play in um, fairly well. I've, I've actually experimented with even having... Uh, the common tongue being a more regional uh, common tongue where even humans might not know a, a different region's common language, uh, even though it was a human language as well. And uh, it really played out well in that campaign because one character uh, did not speak the common language that everyone else could use. And so... Um, that character had to speak uh, Elvish. It was a halfling character. Had to speak Elvish to the elf, and then the elf had to translate uh, back and forth amongst the the rest of the party. And and it it really created a an interesting group dynamic, in that um, you know they they all had to role play out the language barrier when dealing with that one particular player. So. Uh, so it, it was a lot of fun. Development of Towns by Tony Watson. And again, just adding additional layers of, uh, of detail to the environments that the player characters are going to get involved with. Let there be a method to your madness. And, and this goes to uh, dungeon design and, you know, how you populate your, your dungeon with, uh, with both, you know, wandering monsters and creatures and, and um, purposes for each of the rooms and, and to make that all kind of make sense. And, and later on, many of us would start calling this, uh, you know, the ecology of the dungeon needs to make sense. And, uh, and this is an early, you know, an early contribution to that idea that your dungeons aren't just a, a bunch of random, randomly thrown together rooms um, with no connection from one room to the next. Designing for unique wilderness encounters. So again, adding additional layers of complexity and, you know, just different ways of looking at things. Another um, Metamorphosis Alpha article by James Ward. Gets into mutation charts. How Heavy Is My Giant? By Schlump the Orc. <laughs> A 
we had to deal with the giant's footsteps and I guess the size of their footsteps. Interesting stuff. Notes from a semi-successful D&D player, James Ward. I seriously doubt he was semi-successful. <laughs> I would imagine that he was, you know, really quite successful at playing. This is an interesting article where they talk about Tolkien in Dungeons and & Dragons and, and the, I guess, the, the conflict uh, among some people who were looking to see Dungeons and Dragons being more Tolkien-esque. Um, meanwhile, you know, TSR argues that, uh, you know, D&D is heavily inspired by and influenced by uh, Tolkien's writings, but uh, it's not an exact duplication of, of it. And so it was an interesting article to read, and I suggest if you ever do get your hands on the, on the copy of this, um, you know, you give it a full read. One of my favorite halfling images. Uh, I'm not quite sure who do, you know who has done this, but uh, this will reappear in probably my favorite uh, best of dragon uh, dragons, and and that was uh, volume three. So I will spend time with that uh, again. But uh, I, I played a halfling through my entire time through uh, first edition Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, so always drawn to uh, to these images. The meaning of law and chaos in Dungeons and Dragons, so, uh, and their relationship to good and evil. And so it's still like almost always returning to the alignment system and and talks about, you know, how to you know how to conceptualize the the alignment system um, more so than I, I I think that um, you know if you just rely on well this is lawful good without a, a full understanding of of how they actually work together then maybe that's the reason why so many people really don't like or or see the usefulness of the alignment system as it was laid out especially for advanced Dungeons and Dragons. And they give you some examples here of, of where the various um, types of creatures would fall into. D&D is only as good as the DM by Gary Gygax. And remember, you know, Gary Gygax wrote books about how to you know, how to be a player and how to be a DM, you know, a, a good game master. And, and um, those are full length, you know, novels. So he, he obviously had a lot of uh, things to say about how to play the game or how to run a game. And so it's always, it's always good to come across these shorter versions of the, you know, uh, of his ideas. Gary Gygax on the origins of the game. The magic system. And again, just going into where it really came from. And a lot of times they'll, they'll describe it as the Vancean system of magic. Um, Jack Vance novels being a major uh, influence on... Uh, you know, on Dungeons and Dragons, on Gary Gygax and how he looked at it. Um, okay. Some miscellaneous tables and such. Deserted Cities on Mars by Jim Ward. Monkish combat in the arena of promotion. It's pretty cool. They have the 
the various images that you would see in like those really old school like instructional manuals on on martial arts and such so it's pretty cool they go into all the different types of combat maneuvers that would be in a martial arts contest some thoughts on the speed of the lightning bolt Looks like an article on uh, what to do if your dog eats your dice. Uh, perhaps doing dice uh, percentages generated with two standard dice, D6. All right, so how you could use two D6 to, uh, or, or a number of D6, I guess, in order to produce the equivalent of rolling a D100. Excerpt from an interview with a rust monster. How effective is a Panderfaust against a troll? I hear you have some some weapons by type and effect so uh, adding in uh, more modern day weapons and such uh, into D&D &D terms White phosphorus adds two to eight, uh, two to eight damage per, or until extinguished. Pretty cool if you want to include uh, modern weapons into your campaign world. An illusionist variant. An article on Tombs and Crypts by James Ward. Halfling dwarves, clerics, and thieves in the dungeon. And a pair of new treasures and some new monsters to make the pot sweeter. You can see a lot of articles. Here's one on uh, bards. A lot of articles uh, thrown into this 72 page magazine the ranger class the original ranger class wizard research rules <coughs> witchcraft so kind of making like a witch subclass Secret orders of witches and their powers. And solo Dungeons and Dragons adventures. I've actually heard about this article and you know, it was a, it was a whole section. This is definitely something I am going to print out and take a real good look at. So solo adventures. So how to create solo adventures? It's only two pages long as well. Really cool. Definitely something I'm going to print out. Lycanthropy, so the progress of the disease. So uh, taking a look at, you know, how it onsets. The Japanese mythos. A 
know, look out Oriental Adventures and all the controversies that that supposedly raised. Some random monsters. It looks like more of a random monster generator. Yeah. A demon generator. That's pretty cool. And that's it. So as you can see, it's really jam-packed with a lot of really interesting articles, uh, a lot of useful advice, and uh, you know, and, and and some pages, you know, that I, I think are, you know, really something that uh, every DM should take a look at. Uh, and those are those concepts of of really fleshing out um, your dungeons or your your adventure spaces, whether it be wilderness or dungeon. And um, the solo play one was really something that I had forgotten all about, and I want to take a look at that uh, in great detail. So, once again, thanks for joining. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. This is episode one, so there will be a five, five video series on each of the best of dragons, and then. If there are some individual Dragon Magazines that I do pick up, then I will, uh, of course, include those as well. I know there's one, I believe it's like uh, issue 78 or something that has the the Bandit NPC class that uh, I remember very fondly of, and I want to get my hands on that as well. I also picked up on eBay um, Dragon Tales uh, Anthology, and there's a... There's a, an adventure, well, not an adventure, a story in there that my DM at the time converted into an adventure. And uh, a super, super memorable um, storyline that uh, I'm hoping after 35 plus years when I read it, it still sounds as brilliant as it did back when I was a teenager. It may, may, may or may not, but I'm looking forward to... Uh, getting that uh, sometime within the next week. So that will be a separate video that I'm going to include in the, um, the pairing up with these, uh, the best of Dragon magazines as well. So uh, once again, thanks for joining. I hope you like this video. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the, the comments section. If there's anything that you want me to uh, take a closer look at, um, maybe a, a different issue of Dragon Magazine. What I like to do with my videos is I like to get the physical copy and then I will utilize a, uh, a PDF if I find one um, to use. I, but I always you know, try to get the physical copy uh, in my hands and then do a video. Uh, and, and then it's the same thing when I buy Kickstarters and, and you know, I wait for the physical copy to come before I'll do a video that way I have both the physical and the PDF because in I, I never know how certain things are going to present uh, you know as I, I came up here with my just my desktop camera could not truly capture um, a good a good look through of this magazine so enjoy the rest of your day it's a beautiful day out here in New York so uh, you know hopefully you, you have some good weather and uh, I look forward to seeing you on the gaming screen sometime soon. You'll have a great rest of your day. Take care.